In previous episodes, we've actually heard about this piece, the Messiaen's, Olivier Messiaen's Quartet for the End of Time, that Messiaen wrote when he was a prisoner of war during the Second World War in a Nazi concentration camp. And this piece, this quartet, was performed by his fellow prisoners, premiered in the mud and the rain to 400 inmates. It's a real example of courage and creativity in the face of death and destruction and hopelessness. The Quartet for the End of Time is written for a slightly unconventional combination of instruments, for a quartet anyway. It's written for a violin, a cello, and then a clarinet and piano. It's a weird combination, but they had to use what they could at the camp, and of course, the musicians that they could. The End of Time itself is inspired by the Book of Revelation, it, and it's it's reflective of Messiaen's own deep Catholic faith, looking forward to the ultimate redemption from the wretched state of affairs in the world at the time. And it really has this courage baked into the music. It's in the music, and it's through the music, and it's, it's imbued into, into the performance. Messiaen said himself, never have I been heard with such rapt attention. And I wonder if that's how we will appreciate art after this, in this post-COVID world. Now that we've been torn away from our connection to the arts, we've been torn away from live performance of this great human experience of going to a concert hall or going to a theatre or going to an opera house and letting the sound wash over us and experiencing this in time. I wonder if, if we'll get a similar appreciation of the role arts play in our lives after this. We're going to listen to the very first movement this week of Messiaen's Quartet for the End of Time, as recommended by William Harvey, and it is called the Liturgie de Cristal, the, the Liturgy of Crystal, the Crystal Liturgy, and it, and it revolves around this bird song that Messiaen was fascinated in writing down, in notating, and it's not just, you know, a simple cuckoo cry. These a real bird songs, irregular, imitating nature. Because between three and four in the morning, the awakening of the birds, Messiaen wrote about that, and, and he wanted a, a solo blackbird or a nightingale that would improvise, surrounded by a shimmer of sound and by a halo of trills, lost very high in the trees. He thought this would transpose the work into a sort of a religious plane. And so in this, the clarinet and the violin depict the bird song, while the cello cycles the same five note melody over and over again. And the piano repeats and repeats a cycle of 29 chords, all independent of each other. Messiaen said himself that his music depended on, on uneven beats and really depicting the nature of like a rippling water and how uneven that is and the unevenness of a waving tree and the movements of clouds and so perhaps the end of time has a different meaning as well not just the biblical meaning but the fact that that Messian really railed against rhythmic regularity and he was interested for example in Indian classical music and so you can hear the way he depicts the bird song in this is is far from regular but it really takes us to this picture this transcendent picture of courage in times of trouble well I hope you enjoyed this week's COVID classical on courage we certainly examined some fantastic and inspiring examples of courage from some of the world's greatest composers and some of the most beautiful classical music ever written. Just remember, if you've got any suggestions of what you'd like to see from COVID Classical, if there's a certain theme you would like us to explore or guests you might like to hear from, please feel free to comment below. And as always, like and subscribe to let us know you're listening. I hope this music can sustain you this week, give you inspiration, and give you solace during this crazy old time we're all going through. And until next time, keep the music playing.